This video is sponsored by Ineo, who has hooked me up with Keyshot 9 to bring great tutorials to you. Hey, I'm Sam and I do design and in the video today I'm showing you how to make this Georgian panelling floral pattern in Keyshot. So I've set up a scene here and in the background I'm quite proud of this Georgian panelling that I've included as a detail. But the way that I did this was not actually modeling it in physical geometry, but I used displacement maps to tell Keyshot that that is the geometry that I want to show up. So in theory, that can be a lot faster than modeling things. And I would have had to model all of this in something like Blender or something else worse off like SolidWorks that I'm used to. Uh, but actually, just by using black and white images, I can tell Keyshot to make things embossed or debossed and give it its own geometry based on the color that the image is showing. Uh, so to show that a little bit better, I can actually come to a different camera over here. And you can see that it is actually all uh, three-dimensional and popping out of the wall with all the little details in there as well. And I can actually use that texture to drive how rough or not rough the overall wall is as well. So I've actually got a smoother, more reflective material on the wall panel here. But anywhere that's the panel itself, I can tell Keyshot using the exact same texture map that is in the displacement to uh, make that a little bit more matte as well. So we're going to jump into the Illustrator file that I used to make this. And this definitely was the result of, uh, I think, 10 uh, attempts at uh, making this displacement map. So in theory, it is faster than modeling. But obviously, if you're going back and forth and updating the displacement map, uh, then that could actually take up more time as well. So it's just as simple as this. And most, most of the time was spent in the floral section down here. So you can see that I've got uh, areas of the wall that will be exported as transparent, which is these white bits here. And anything that is black, Keyshot will treat as no bump. And anything that is white, Keyshot will treat as uh, protruding out as much as possible. So you can see that I've got this stepped pattern here. And all I've done to, to make that is it's a stroke pattern. So the way that I've set this up is to turn this gradient into uh, having the gradient apply across the stroke and then I can have this gradient slider to change the way that I want. So don't forget that anything black is going to be no change and anything white is going to be protruded as much as possible. Uh, and that is interesting when it comes to this pattern as well because I do not want this floral pattern to extrude as far out as uh, the detail around it. And the same goes for the square panel in here as well, this flat panel is not 100% white because I don't want it to extrude as much as this. And it's actually pretty tricky to make my brain understand that because we're so used to seeing things in terms of light and shadow. And I almost started to model this or, or draw this in Illustrator with having a, a cast shadow on it as well, which is not how Keyshot reads it. So for example, we want in the end result to have this top edge of this floral pattern to be a highlight and this bottom edge to be a low light in shadow. But what we actually need to tell Keyshot is the center part is protruding out and the light and shadow will fix itself. It will sort itself out after that. So all I did was I exported that as a PNG and brought it into Keyshot and we can go into the material graph now. I bring the material graph over and you can see I've added it in here. This is the texture map. Uh, let's just move some things around. So we've got the texture map here that I was exported and you can see I was on version 10 by the time I thought it was good enough to start posting. That's going into the displacement node, which is displacing it at about 20 millimeters with a triangle size, which is how fine the triangles are going to be. The smaller the triangles, the more detail you're going to have. And the maximum triangles uh, tries to help your computer out a little bit without burning out so much. And it actually limits the amount of triangles that it's going to use. This isn't an exact number. It is an estimate. Um, but the default, I think, is 6. And I increased that all the way up to 30 because uh, I wanted to have a nice, smooth transition between things that were not bumpy and things that were bumpy. 
what I tend to do actually is I can make this number as small as I possibly want. So 0 0.0001 millimeters and it'll max out at around about 30 million triangles. So you can see up here uh, the number of triangles I've got is 38 million, but that's also because I have a displacement map on the floor as well to try and separate out the different floor panels. Um, so between the two, I'm looking at about 40 million triangles, which I'm running a MacBook Pro 16 inch with a few bump specs and it can handle 40 million triangles at no problem. Um, so yeah, those were the, the details that I had in there. In terms of the glossiness, like I said before, the wall panel is glossier than the actual uh, molding that would be protruding from the wall itself. Uh, I'm doing that with a few different uh, color composites uh, into the roughness panel and then using that as a color composite to uh, mask out the existing texture that I have in here. So if I press C on the keyboard to see where they come in together, you can see that I'm mixing in my roughness map and also mixing in the black and white of the uh, texture just to try and separate those two out a little bit. I still want to see differences in the uh, roughness to give this some texture in here but I just want to show that it is a uh, something else applied to the wall uh, and it's not part of the wall itself which is why I separated those out. So if I hit C on the keyboard again that's going to res up. Um, one last little thing is I added in this noise fractal uh, bump map on top of everything and that's a really fine bump map. It's only at five millimeters. Sometimes I go uh, slightly smaller in terms of millimeters if I want to zoom in even more. Uh, but what that's going to do is give it a, um, a textured look as if it's just been brushed with a brush roller when the paint's been applied. Uh, and that's just going to help again with some more realism, some more detail in there as well. And that is just applied to the whole thing. Um, so that's going to bounce the light around a little bit more. And it means that we don't need to be as rough with our texture because that bump map is adding in a little bit of roughness as well. And the from what I find, the more matte the material is, so the more rough, the higher the roughness, the longer it takes to render. So if we, if we can try and bring that roughness down as much as possible, then it will be faster to render. So having in that bump map and having in a slightly lower roughness setting is going to help with rendering time as well. Uh, that's what I've found in, in my opinion. So there we go. That's pretty much the whole uh, way that I set this up. I'm actually going to leave this file, this wall texture file on my website. Uh, everyone is going through a tough time at the moment and some people have told me to sell this wall panel because um, they'd buy it in a heartbeat but I'm actually going to give it away to you guys watching to say thank you for watching so if you just head to my website you can download that uh, put it in your scenes and I also have a video that I'm posting today on the overall scene and the HDRI to get the lighting environment set up nicely as well and it's going to be a lot easier than you think. So if you haven't seen that video, go and check that video out uh, to see how to set up a scene like this as well. Overall, if you've learned anything in this video, don't forget to comment down below because I love reading about it. It really makes my day. And don't forget to like and comment and subscribe and hit the bell button and everything else that YouTube asks you to do. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.